The Seedkeeper from Satochip is a powerful tool that can be used to securely store things like seed phrases, pass phrases, wallet descriptors, uh, or even important passwords. And to do so in a way that is physically secure, is easy to transport, is easy to store, even if the locations you're storing it in are themselves insecure. So in this video, I'll be running through and demonstrating some of the new features in the Seedkeeper version 2 cards and also making use of the new Seedkeeper mobile app, which makes everything to do with these cards much easier. And finally, I'll just run through what some of these new features look like when used with the Seed Signer. So let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. I ordered some new Seed Keeper cards from Satochip and what you get is quite straightforward, you know, just a brochure, a sticker, and the Seed Keeper itself just comes in this card here with a tamper evidence sticker. And that is the Seed Keeper just there. The uh, artwork for the card has not actually changed, so I've actually labelled this one V1 and I'll actually label this one V2 so I don't get them mixed up. And I'll just quickly show you the new app and the process to set these up and get started. So basically I've just got an Android smartphone here and if I just go onto the Google Play Store, it's this Seed Keeper app just here, that's the one that I want, so I'll just install that. There we go, so I'll just say open. This is the app we are going to use, so it has a little bit of an instruction there and we'll just say start. And the step one is just to click and scan. So the first thing you gotta do is actually enter in the pin for the device. Uh, I'll just enter in anything because this hasn't been set up yet. It's gonna say card not initialized. So I have to set the pin for this device before I do anything else. And for the sake of the video, I will just set it to one, two, three, four. And I'll type it in a second time, one, two, three, four. And say done, and then say confirm. And then basically now I can just scan my new Seed Keeper card to the phone card set up successful. And now I'll just log in, one, two, three, four. There we go, card scanned successfully. And basically now we can see this card here has no secrets on it. So let's just quickly run through the features on this app. So if I wanna add a new secret into the card, I can basically generate a new secret from scratch or I can import an existing secret. So if I say import secret, in terms of the types of things we might store, we can have passwords, we can also have mnemonics, so things like wallet recovery phrases, we can have wallet descriptors, uh, which is very important if you're using something like multi-sig, uh, and we can also just store any other random type of data we want onto these cards. One of the big improvements for the Seed Keeper version two cards is you can actually store longer passwords than you could with the version 1 cards. These ones topped out at uh, I think it was 256 characters whereas these ones can store much longer passwords on there. Though the limit of storage on the card is still 4 kilobytes, you're not going to store huge amounts of data on there but more than enough for things like passwords, recovery phrases, wallet descriptors uh, or even just sort of general notes and data as well. So for example if I want to put a password onto this card I could just say you know let's say that's the password for Gmail and I could put in the username, the URL, and then I could type in the password itself. So I'll just call that password for a demo, and just say import, and then basically I can just stick this under here. There you go. So it has now imported Gmail onto my Seed Keeper. So I want to view what that password is, I can just click on Gmail, say reveal, and then basically I have to just slide this under there again. There we go, secret exported successfully. So I can see that secret, I could copy it, I could show it as a QR code if I want to scan it on some other device. And one of the new features for Seedkeeper V2 is I can also delete secrets as well. Uh, this was not possible on the Seedkeeper V1 cards. You can only add secrets on, you could not delete them. So for example, I want to delete the secret, I check the box to proceed and just say delete. Then I'll just shove that in and scan it. And that secret now has been deleted. And the great thing here is the ability now to be able to add passwords as well as delete them if you want to remove them or change them. To be able to do all of this on a mobile phone as well as, you know, nice quality of life things like being able to display a password as a QR code, you know, make the Seed Keeper card much more useful as a general password manager. You know, obviously it's not going to take the place of something that might store, you know, hundreds of different passwords for you, but, you know, there might be a handful of passwords that you sort of want to keep extra secure, uh, that you might not want to keep in your password manager with everything 
anything else. And the seed keeper can be an excellent option for how you handle those. And if we want to generate a secret, we basically can just click generate secret and we can choose passwords or mnemonics. So if we go into password, we can see uh, all of that information we had before, plus the usual sort of options for strong passwords with what you want to have in there. And if I just say generate, you'll see it's generating uh, different passwords that meet these requirements. So we can go from eight characters all the way up to 16. And we can also have pass phrases if we click this easy to read button. So once we're happy with that, we need to include at least a label. So we'll just say, call that one test. And then I'll just say import. And basically then I just put the card there and that has been stored securely on the card. The other thing we can do is we can generate mnemonics. Though it's important to say for mnemonics, this step generates these mnemonics on your phone. So unless the phone itself is uh, living offline and air-gapped, uh, these mnemonics should be considered hot. In terms of other stuff about the card, if we click on the three dots up here, we can see all of the other options we have. So we can actually view the card information, uh, which tells us things like the version, how much space is on there, tells us that this card is genuine. Uh, and we can also do things here like set a label for the Seed Keeper card. There we go. So now this card has a label. So if I go back there, we can see it tells us the label for the card there. We can also change the pin as well as view the logs, which actually show us uh, how many times secrets and things have been uh, imported uh, and Im imported, exported and reset from the device. So every action that happens on this is actually logged if you're feeling extra paranoid. We can also adjust the card settings, so turn you know some of those uh, tutorials back on again. And this is also where we factory reset this card if we have forgotten the pin. The other very useful thing in this menu is this make a backup feature. So basically what this allows us to do is clone all of the secrets from one card onto another. And this backup feature is actually what makes Seedkeeper very useful for things like inheritance as well as distributed storage. Because the key thing to understand here is that each of the Seedkeeper copies that you you make has its own unique pin. So you could have, you know, three or four of these different Seed Keeper cards that you distribute to different people, store in different places, and they could each actually have a unique pin that is unique to that card, allowing you to store your Seed Keeper card in places or with people who will be unable to access it until they also get the pin that you have set for that card. So I'll just demo this process on how to securely copy everything from this version one card I've used in previous videos onto this new version two card that I just got. So first things first, I'll go back out to the main menu and I'll just enter the pin for this card over here, which is actually AAAA. It's different to this one. And I'll just tap that. There we go, card scanned. And we can actually see all of the uh, messages and passwords from my previous videos on there. So now what I'll do is I'll just say make a backup. So we'll say start. So we'll start with a backup card. The pin for this one is actually one, two, three, four. Done, next, I'll just, yep, card scanned. Now we scan the MasterCard that we just had before. Oop, hang on. There we go. Takes a bit longer to scan because it's actually taking an encrypted backup of everything off the card. And so then I'll say make backup and then say next. Now what happens is I just put the backup card in and basically it takes a bit longer because it's basically, there we go, card backed up successfully. So now we can see that it has actually copied the 14 secrets that were on here onto here and I can say home. And one important aspect of this backup feature that I'll just mention is that it does not overwrite what is already on the backup card. It simply adds any secrets from the source card uh, that are missing onto the backup card as well. So again, you can safely do this without worrying about accidentally overwriting uh, what is on the backup card. Or you can use this feature to do things like have a number of different cards that might have different subsets of secrets on them and have them all combined together into some kind of other backup card that has the contents of all the other ones. Again, very flexible, very powerful. And the last thing in the app that I'll demo is how to factory reset these cards. So if we go into the, go into the settings and basically say reset my card, check the box. Basically it is a process of having to send the reset command, scan the card, and then say send reset command. So you gotta basically do it five times in a row to wipe the card.
and there we go. So that card now is wiped and back to the beginning. This is also a good spot to say, this app works just the same with DIY cards. With the only difference being, if you go into card information, you will see that the DIY cards do not get shown as genuine, which is exactly what we would expect. So the key thing here is that while retail cards cannot be upgraded from version one to version two, if you're someone who has DIY cards and have at least one spare Java card, you can actually just flash the new version two firmware onto your Java card and then use the backup tool to be able to clone all the seeds from your existing version one seed keeper to your version two DIY seed keeper and you are good to go. So basically here I have an updated version of my seed keeper plus seed signer fork that I run through here. And if we put in the version two card, we can not only load the uh, seed from the seed keeper card, just like before. So I'll just set the pin to be one, two, three, four. So there are all of the seeds on the version two card that I copied off the V1. We can not only do that, but we can also now go into Smart Card Tools, go into Seed Keeper Functions, uh, and we can view the secrets on the card just like before. So for example, we can load a demo password up and just see what it is on the screen. We can also show that as a QR code if we want to be able to scan that uh, with another device. We can not only save passwords to the card just like before, but we can also now delete secrets from the card if we don't want them, making this much more useful as a more general password manager. This fork has also been updated if you go into DIY tools to be able to install a bunch of applets, including the updated V2 applet onto DIY cards. I've also added some other useful applets like Smart PGP, the uh, Spectre DIY applet, and the Vivo Key OTP applet that allows you to use uh, these cards with Yubico Authenticator for TOTP codes. And if you have a THD89 based NFC tag, like this little micro tag just here, you can also build uh, applets on the seed signer itself and then flash these onto these micro tags and have again all the full functionality of a full sized card in a much smaller and more discreet form factor, something perfect to go on like a keychain or something like that. And this is also a good spot to do a quick sneak peek on something else that uh, is cooking for uh, Seed Signer. One of the big shortcomings in the approach that I showed in my previous video is the quality of these PN532 boards can be really bad. There are lots of clones floating around that really struggle to work. And so basically what I've got right here is actually a full smart card reader that actually wires into the uh, GPIO pins on these Raspberry Pi, allowing you to have a low cost, reliable uh, smart card connection that doesn't need to use the USB ports. So basically the end goal will be to reformat all of this into a hat that will fit between the screen and the Raspberry Pi board or could actually stick on the bottom depending on how you want to stack it together. You can keep an eye out for that over the coming months and if you think you're someone who would like to help test these boards definitely just keep an eye on the Seed Signer Telegram group. And the last thing I'll quickly mention is if you are still wanting to use a desktop you know, PC of some kind there is a new utility called Sato Chip Utils that rolls a lot of the functionality for the different Sato Chip cards all in together. So if we just download and and run that and then stick our version 2 card into our reader we can basically do all of the same things we could do in the mobile app here on our desktop as well. And the last setting you'll notice actually is there is the ability to disable NFC on these cards. I'm pretty sure this is only available right now through a command line interface. Summary time. So the key thing to say is that since my previous video on the Seedkeeper devices, the user experience has dramatically improved. When I originally looked at these cards, basically if you wanted to use them, you had to use a fairly old style Python app, which was quite clunky, and the user experience using the new mobile app is much better. The additional features that are available in terms of being able to delete passwords that are on there and being able to better store larger passwords to be able to more cleanly store things like wallet descriptors uh, is a really welcome feature. And again, I really do think that these Seedkeeper cards just pair brilliantly with something like Seed Signer. And just as I demonstrated through this video, the other really great thing about Seedkeeper is the way that Sato Chip continue to be committed to open source. If you want to give the DIY thing a go, you could either buy the Java cards from the Sato Chip store uh, or even my my little DIY store and the great thing about these Java cards is they can be easily and cheaply posted uh, just about anywhere in the world. I also do have an affiliate link if you'd like to buy some of these and help me out in the process. If you're someone who has any questions about these Seed Keeper cards, you know, definitely just leave a reply in the comments. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Other than that, stay safe.
Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.